Transit yeah, officials Vindberg. and supercars. We've got Di Pasquale and Windcup, Davison and Van Gisbergen. Let's add some distance and maybe a hint of water to the supercar party. Race 29, 250 k's in Sydney, and Van Gisbergen has got the whole shot. Windcup round the outside. Windcup's gone to position number one, down towards two. And a great start by Windcup, then Di Pasquale. Watch for Shane down the inside. Soft tyre, work for Winkup off the front of the road. And he was around the outside, no problem at all, was it? It was an unbelievable start. In fact, the Shell V-Power cars were able to hold off Van Giersbergen with the hard tyres. A nice job by the Shell Mustangs. Off the road goes Reynolds. Who's on the softer tyre. And look for the orange light. The orange light in the windscreen denotes the, tar the cars that are on that super soft Dunlop or the possible duration of these tyres and whether they will be durable. Here's an opportunity down the inside at Turn 4. He'll make this work. Done. Chaz knows that he's got the inside line when it comes to the right-hander at Turn 8 and uses it to perfection. Reynolds is looking to capitalise, park it on the inside and leave Waters one back and one wide. In fact, Reynolds is going to grab two for one there. He's on the soft tyre, so he's got the advantage. And is he able to get round? He is. So he was able to park the car in a very nice spot. Talking to Chaz Mostert about pressures coming up to the normal levels now in car number 25. He's sitting in 10th, so... Oops. And that's not a good look for Macaulay Jones. It's not. It actually looks like it's genuinely on fire, doesn't it? I'm trying to pick what style of smoke that is, but it's a... Bad smoke. And, wh and where's it coming? Top of the track, between 10 and 11. Wow. That might even bring the safety car out based on being in that zone. Yeah, it has. This is going to affect Van Gisbergen here because it, it won't be done in time. He slowed it up at the control line just on the approach to it. Hazelwood having double stack as well. That's going to hurt him. Shell V-Power having to double stack too. Hard. Just seeing Fabian Coulthard come back to the lane. They've been requested to come back. They've ended up with both compounds of the soft tyre and the hard tyre on the car at once. So that was a mix-up. Every car came to the lane when they pitted under safety cars. So easy to understand how that can get mixed up with tyres out in the lane. Jamie's now got full control. He can decide where to crack the throttle. And he has. Bolted down the road. Got a nice little extra car length there going. So keep an eye out for Waters here in the Monster Energy car, sitting in eighth position. And then Reynolds, who got off to a pretty solid start early with the Super Soft, he's gone the other way now with the hard. Well, that's the long way round there for Will. Well, this is going to end up with dirt. And does. Rooster tails out the other side. There'll be a change for the lead here shortly because of the tyre on that car. You can see the white wall on the Dunlop Super Soft. Jamie's fully aware of it. Leaves him some space, sits up high, and allows Waters to go to the lead. And they actually jump off the edge of the road there in the first part of 10. Now, you'll get better drive out of here, LeBrock. No rest for case. And then is able to slide down the inside. So that will move him up into position number two. Makes the Tickford cars one and two. And they've got to use both variants, the hard tyre and the super soft. These are good mates. Brody Kostecki and oh, Anton Di Pasquale. They're testing it, though, because there was side-to-side -side contact in the hairpin there. And, in fact, Anton just rolled out of it as they got up to turn 10. They were dead set door handle to door handle and locked. Ball. I try to maximise your performance. Penalty car 19. Pit lane penalty car 19. Incorrect use of tyres. Because when you come around the outside here at turn three, it's difficult to get the nose back across down here at four, and Goddard's going to force the issue, and he stays there. But now it will reveal in Shane's direction when they get to turn five, and he prevails. See, Anton saying, I don't know what's going on. There's a bit of that going on out there at the moment on various radios because they're trying to work out where they are in the scheme of things. Yep. You've got a little list here. So uh, that's not, that'll actually disturb the back of that car's behaviour a little bit on Anton's car at the moment. It's got a fair bite out of the right rear corner. 
Is that thump? Oh, this could be another one here. That's the second thump of the night for Anton. That one was Shane. Is that the one from Brody earlier? Do you reckon? I don't think so. I think that's another one. one. Yeah. yeah, because I didn't see that much damage. That's a little return of serve there. Turn three. Di Pasquale and Van Gisbergen at it. And now Shane gets down the inside there, which always works out nicely down here at turn five. If you can stay up high and wide there. Now that means that Shane's gone up into ninth position. If you just do the numbers roughly, they're all in on lap seven. Yeah. They've all done the same fuel. Yeah. We've got well, to like lap 27 going on to 28 now. So they've done 20 laps essentially. Uh, no, no, what well, they're going to need go. to do is they're going to need to do another 15 or 16 laps to get to that, to do a 20 lap run on the super soft tyre. And you want me to ruin the story? if it doesn't rain. Yes, OK. So on the last lap, Brown, for example, continued to be the fastest car. And there he is in evidence getting up the inside of Jack, who's the first one to start complaining about tyre behaviour. So 20-odd yeah, laps. Really good. Well, nice and this is uh, Bryce Fullwood, who's been struggling for grip just in the last lap Ooh. or two, and the contact, heavy contact between Di Pasquale and Mostert in the hairpin down here. They've brought Bryce in and changed tyres. So watch this. On board with Mostert. Whoa, oh, oh, I how's know. the speedway? That rear tyre, that right rear tyre is destroyed. It's a good catch. A nice slide. And Whoa. then bang, that's the contact we just saw the outside shot of. Particularly for crews that are doing this at the moment. So in the sprint races where there are two people across the line. Whoa, Bryce Fullwood and Cam Waters. That may look strange at home, but if you sit in the cars, you'd understand why. It's actually very difficult sometimes to see who's around you. So he started to move to the left to come to the lane and then realised there was a car there. So he tried to move it over. Oh, yeah, spotted him, rolled out of the throttle quickly, and then jumped back on. Did they actually bump? No, <laughs> he actually he grabbed the brake. Yeah. It wasn't just the throttle. Will Brown will assume the lead. Pulls up right on the marks, very nicely done. Remember now, a single technician in each corner of the car. We've seen the different format over the last few weeks. Tear off away from the screen. They can layer up to five of those up. They get covered in dirt and oil. Go, 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 go. Rubber. Oops, that was close. Davison and Percat. Percat, so that was... A little bit of break there. Oh, oh, he wants to lock up. He's not worried about that, but oh, big gain there. <laughs> Massive gain there, Mark Winterbottom. That was great presence of mind. That was fireworks ahead of the game for Davison. Oh, this is a good battle because these guys are on the same strategy. Remember, we saw them come out with the pits together. They're the first in the queue that have done their two stops, and they're on the run to the end. Lost it up very high and wide, looking for crisscross. Slide down the other side of him. And then this was the one that made both Mark and I stop breathing for a moment. And the reason was because he was jammed up on the curb, Chaz, and it made the car bounce. And if you end up bouncing hip and shoulder into the car alongside, you can both end up off the road very quickly. Leading the race, Winkup and Van Gisbergen, followed by Zane Goddard, who's done a brilliant job in car number 35 in the yellow cover entry. Those guys that I've just mentioned are yet to take their second stop. First in the queue that's taken the fuel and the tyres. And the compulsory stop includes Cam Waters, Will Brown and Jack LeBrock. Waters is in a pretty decent position here at the moment and the tyre has been well out. They're on the same strategy. They've been on the same tyre the whole time. They went on to the hard tyre of the early stop with the safety car. And Van Gisbergen's been able to drag his way up to Jamie and get by. There's Brody catching Jack LeBrock. Jack LeBrock on the last lap was 22nd fastest. Brody was 7th. Mostert again was the fastest car on the previous lap. Three Cam Waters minutes. hanging on to Propo. Cam Waters 2.9 seconds up the road. Down the inside goes Brody. He wasn't quite there, but he forced his way into that position. This, with nine laps remaining, is going to be a great battle. Will Brown was the opposite last weekend. He was the one that was being hunted. He is the hunter, and there's a little bit more water out there. GT? Exactly that, Mark Scaife. The sea mist is turning to rain, so actual <laughs> proper raindrop falling in pit lane. It's woken everyone up in the pit bunkers there. Got come out looking at the sky. That's pointless. It's dark out here. You can't see it. You have to feel it. It is raining.
Oh. Show replay. Check it out. This is the reason why this occurred. Brody ran wide and he tried to cover. Fires down the inside. Nice work. And look at that slippery surface down there into turn two. 0.8 of a second is the official margin. Nothing in it between these two. And there's the battle for the minor placings. And Van Gisbergen's alive here as well. What a drive by Shane. Up that early double stack. He's reusing these tyres. And he's able to get a run on at the straight on Brody. Don't discount Van Gisbergen in this. Remember Van Gisbergen and Mostert last weekend had one of the closest finishes we've ever seen at Sydney Motorsport Park. Down the inside goes Shane. Nice manoeuvre. 0.9 of a second and here we go. Van Gisbergen up on the outside. This is the battle for third and it might quickly become a battle for the lead. Van Gisbergen does the undercut. Slides out from a crisscross. Better traction and that moves him up into third. This has been a fantastic drive. Look at Wincup and Mostert on the run into one. Jamie on the inside. Chaz on the outside and claims him. Now think back to Sandown earlier in the year, Mark, and the stunning performance in greasy conditions down there by Van Gisbergen. Is he about to do the same thing? Drives up the inside of Will Brown. This is a battle for second place. Shane Van Gisbergen is bringing this race alive and runs right around the outside of turn three, and that will move him up one spot. But he's got to close off when they get down here to four, and he's done it. But he's going to have to do. So he moves to the outside. And he's going to turn down nice and straight, nice and square, maximise the grip and drive it off the corner. And he's able to do it. Goes to the lead, Van Gisbergen. Superb execution of that manoeuvre as Tim Edwards looks on. Wow, great job. So the reuse of the tyre seems to have worked as Wink Cup just slides the car down the inside of the monster Mustang. With enormous strategic complexity, having to bring on fuel, having to deal with potentially three different tyre variants. They didn't get onto the wet, but they have all used the hard and the super soft tyre. Water's currently clinging to third spot, but look at this angry pack. And it's a great gaggle of teams because Team 18, Charlie's work on team now, down the inside of Will Brown. Percat from Brad Jones Racing now is able to get down the inside also. So there's a... A plethora of teams that are right in behind the next gaggle of cars doing a really good job. Perkett up on the outside here at Brown at turn six. And while they're racing so hard, they're also having to deal with absolute lack of grip out there at the moment. At the present time, Waters is clinging to that spot on the podium and that'd be just reward for a beautiful drive tonight. Look at Mostert down the inside, further attacking the back bumper of the Mustang. Two corners run to run now for Shane Van Gisbergen. He lines it up. This has been a remarkable comeback when you stop and consider the double stacking earlier this evening. Think about the emotion of last weekend and think about the way in which Red Bull have responded. It is race victory number 54 for Shane Van Gisbergen. His Unreal. teammate Jamie Winkup, position two, 1.1 seconds behind, and a breakthrough well podium for Cam Waters. Well done. Great reaction there by the teams and all of the people that have worked so hard in this industry. Checking those results for you as the rain continues to tumble at Sydney Motorsport Park after 64 fine laps of motorsport. One second margin in favour of Shane Van Gisbergen over Jamie Wincup. Cam Waters hanging on there for that podium in third position. Deep Pasquale fourth, then Mostert you just heard from. Whilst the boys were talking there, we also saw from Motorsport Australia race control a five second post-race time penalty allocated to car number eight, Nick Percat for a driving infringement. We'll follow that story up for you and unpack a bit more of that detail. And then unfortunately not classified, as you can see right at the very back end of it, triggered a safety car early in proceedings, Macaulay-Jones lost an engine.